G'day and welcome to the front of us. I'm Execute, joined today by Space Samoto. How are you doing, mate? Good, good. How are you doing? Good. Just uh, the quiet before the storm, getting ready for AIE and Citizen Con around the corner. I want to be itself. What's going on? AIE. Yeah. Did, when did they change the letters around? What did I say? <laughs> AIE. Oh, AIE. Yeah. I used to go to a place called AIE. The, the, I mean, the I AIE. Aerospace <laughs> Intergalactic Expo. I like yeah, that yeah. one. It rolls off the tongue a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What about yourself? What's been keeping you busy? You're about to go on holiday, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Going to go see the family for uh, the, actually the first time not in too long. Mm. Mm. Actually, how long? I guess uh, it's like five months. So, not too bad. But we're going to meet up again. It's been a little while. Mm, good. So basically, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a gentleman called Dan um, that I'd been playing with for about a day or two, um, decided to come into the live stream. And long story short, uh, with the live stream, he um, hadn't played the game for very long. Um, but basically, he they had on the uh, ISC, they were talking about the new player experience, and he dropped a few bombshells that just from our perspective, we weren't able to pick up on. Um, and long story short, um, when he talked through some of the stuff, there was just these really glaring omissions that um, I thought were really painful um, that some new players had to go through. Like one of the simple ones was it took him 45 minutes to get out of the default room, as in the hab. Um, yeah, yeah. They build a lot of detail in there for you so that you are entertained mm. when you're stuck in there. Mm. So, yeah, long story short, um, he had to... It took him some time to figure out the Y key. So he managed to get the Y key and he got out of bed and then um, took him a bit longer to basically uh, figure out that he had to hold F instead of E because most uh, first-person shooter games use E instead of F. Um, and then he ma finally managed to get out. But... Um, he also told me some other really key things, like it took him a day and a half to find the actual website uh, to be able to actually buy the game. Um, so this guy really persisted, you know, um, where I think a lot of other people gave up. Um, and I just wonder how many people have given up on this game before they even got a chance to play it. And I, I'd have to say a day and a half. Like I, this guy's not the most computer literate guy. But a day and a half, that's pretty persistent. So I'd have to imagine there's a lot of people that have given up along the way, especially with the the nature of development and the bugginess of this game. What about you? I think a lot of people fall off in all different parts of it because like the, the process starts well before, like you said, at the website. Most mm. games don't have a new player experience regarding just downloading the game. They've not made it particularly easy. Just, just to address the elephant in the room, it's prayer time uh, in your part of the world, I'm, I'm guessing, from the background noise. Yes, yes, I try and try not to talk during these moments. That's all right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll push through. So um, basically, we were talking before the show, and uh, obviously, there's a real difference between learning the game to play the game. Um, one of the things that we talked about was, obviously, um, this is a skill-based game rather than um a grinded game so like world of warcraft you play for two weeks where one of the things i realized down the road is if this is skill based all the things you're going to have to learn just to get up to speed with this game may still take you two weeks and that's just for one proficiency so so just let's just take mining it could take that long because mining's only in its infancies right now and down the road there's going to be things like you know mining under the surface etc 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 yeah 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 so um with that how what type of things do you think cig are in for there's there's a lot that's gonna um come down the, the pipe that's gonna be hard for them yeah i think honestly the one of the big things that they really have to worry about was the website but also they are trying to make such a different kind of game in Star Citizen, something that is uh, plays differently than most other games, but they don't really do much of like telling you that. They don't, like you said with this new player, they don't tell you that you need to press the F button to get out of bed. They don't tell you that you need to be able to press elevator buttons or even scroll down the list of elevator buttons to find the right floor. Um, the idea of finding your spaceship and taking off, yes, if you think about it, makes tons of logical sense. Take the public transit, go to the spaceport, call a ship into a hangar. It's the logical way to go about things, but the way that Star Citizen wants to have you do it isn't something people just know going into the game. And I think that's a lot of what's cool about this game, but also 
what's kind of the problem. Like they have street signs that tell you this is the street, the, the train line you need to take to go somewhere, or this is the stairwell you need to take to get somewhere. And it's really cool that that happens, but you don't know to look for that until Star Citizen tells you to. Mm. I think also it, different lifestyles, like I don't have trains where I live. For an example, you know, um, I I don't have a subway. I I have buses, you know, uh, but I know filthy trainless peasants. Yeah, well, but but but, but th- there are there are towns that don't have buses or trains, so it de- it is dependent right, yeah. on where you live, and um, it seems to be very at the moment based around a city lifestyle. So I do hope they have some diversity in there, so to speak, in transportation terms. Um, no, you're waiting for Pyro. They've got their own public transit. You just drag you out the back of a spaceship, drop you off at an outpost. Yeah. So it's it's like you said, though, there's a few really key things that, that they are missing. Um, the F key instead of E key, I think, is a really big one. And the Y key. The other ones were things like the shortcut keys, like the I, the U, and the R. Um, I actually think one of the things they need to have for new players is the thing that brings up the keys and shows you where all the keys is. If you go into the options screen, mm-hmm. you can go to... like it. it even just an image that comes up that shows you new players, you should look here, here, and here. And a really big glaring one that, that, that came out for me is the guide system. We have this guide system. Was, oh, yeah, there's a guide system. Do you know they don't even tell new players about the guide system? Yeah. I, it, that's the website, once again. Yeah. Just how, how do you find it if, if it's not there? Um, the other one... And Go ahead. Well, going to the key bindings that, like you were talking about, they uh, you can just pull up the personal inner thought system and mm. it easily tells you you know what's the specific key binding for the situation you're in you can rebind it you can favorite it mm. but again they don't tell you that that's possible so you have this very easy method to find this information but you don't even know it's a click away mm. there are some pros for it for sure like um the multiple ways to do things you know that, that, that you know you can do it with the inner thought or you can use a hot key um you can even skip a lot of the stuff or, 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 and that's in both manual and automatic ways, you know, so you can yeah. IR or you can just, uh, sorry, I U or you can just press R or you can, you know, as I said, multiple ways to do things. So they, they have yeah. some pros and tips. So um, I do, do you find that the hint system is enough at the moment? Like, or do you think that, I, I think it needs to be deeper personally, but. Um, oh Yeah. Yeah, I think not only does it need to be deeper, I think there should be tiers of hints. I think there should be hints and tips and things that the game tells you that you absolutely shouldn't miss, right? The Mm -hmm. kinds of things that they put up a a text blurb in the corner of the screen, draw a line tracking the object they're talking about, leave that up for like 10 seconds, make sure the player sees it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other tips that aren't so important. You know, if that first tip was like, you need to press the F key to interact with screens. That's something that every player needs to know right away. But like if it's something that's more like um, uh, you can attach any multi atta- multi-tool attachment to this multi-tool to do multiple things, that's the kind of thing I'd expect to just pop up at the bottom of the screen or even maybe be able to be mm-hmm. turned off easily. Because there are some things that are super important in this game and then there are some things that are only super important if you do a certain type of gameplay. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they need um, like a different like different levels of hints. Like, do you just need the basics, or do you want some really yeah. advanced ones? Um, and that yeah. that thing you mentioned of a highlight system, like highlighting different things on the screen, that's a really good idea as well. Uh, and I do think with the kind of a announcement or the redoing of the player tutorials, I do think that is also a sign that we are rounding the corner on things like Squadron 42 and that because they're coming to the end of those and so they know what those dialed in, locked in gameplay features are going to be and and how they will transfer over to um, Star Citizen as well. So I think that's mm. important to know that that's probably why they're coming now where, as I said in, in the video, they're obviously were going to have to alliterate way too often to keep and maintain them. And that's why they just let them go by the wayside. But I'm interested to see where they go with it. And I do think it, 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 it really kind of surprised me. Um, as I said, with the guy, the gentleman on the live stream, just how much we take for granted as, uh, more experienced players. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just really weird to, to go through all that. Um, one of the things I got written down here is, uh, complexity is a blessing and a curse. So um, it's obviously 
really hard to learn something when it's complex. But as you were saying before, it kind of gives that depth here to the game that we really need. Yeah, yeah. The I love the complexity, and I think uh, the fact that we have it is is only a good thing. Um, as long as you have the ability to learn this stuff in whatever, you know, whether it's from YouTube or tutorials or whatever, mm -hmm. I think more complexity in the game adds more to the game as long as it's not complexity for the sake of complexity, but rather for the sake of that gameplay itself. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, you want to make mining complex enough that people like it, that the, the people who like mining like it, mm -hmm. but also kind of so complex that people who wouldn't normally pick mining as their first thing actively dislike it yeah it's kind of got to have a a weird doubt a depth balance like you don't want to like you said not needlessly complex for the sake of it but it wants to keep a complexity that keeps you interested um and, and that's a really hard balance to achieve and i think they would obviously be testing that internally and that's how they because like if you take mining as the example that we have that is simple on the surface to understand but there's a complexity to, to keeping it in the green. And I think that's a really, they've done it really well there, how they've done it. And I'm yeah. kind of keen to see how, like, we've got that one. Now we've got salvage coming. This is where I, I think it really starts to test the water. Like, like what is the complexity there that keeps you interested? Because if it's just as simple as I've got a paintbrush and I'm basically doing Photoshop on the texture, that might not be enough for some people. But if you have to kind of, you know, um, go around things and paint between the lines, so to speak, it could be more interesting because uh, I'm, I'm interested to see where that goes because it could be very, very deep or it could be really, really shallow. So, yeah. Yeah. And and they're going to do that with all of them, uh, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Yeah, engineering is going to be an interesting one to see in that regard. Yeah. I think uh, we talked about this. Uh, was it you that I talked about this with or Badges? I think it was you on your uh, when we were on, uh, on your... Um, launch sequence we talked about how um engineers will be really pro prolific at different ships because if you have a really like two different large ships the layout could be completely different and just by taking yeah. them from one ship and putting them in another it's like hang on i don't know this layout I know the basics of what i do on every point but they're gonna have to go from point to point to figure out the pathing and then almost the navigation of the wiring yeah again kind of turning i want to say turning people off from trying to getting into different parts of it because like mm. i said before you want people to dislike it and when i say that i don't mean necessarily that people should active like it, it shouldn't be so bad that people are just not wanting to do it at all but it should be enough that people would rather give it to somebody else who specializes in it than try to go through weeks of time to learn it for themselves mm. not saying they shouldn't but it helps to build that i think balance to uh giving other players missions and working together with others it's another good example too of um, simplicity versus complexity because it's very simple to understand how how you've got to repair things, but the complexity becomes in in learning all the different ships integrations and, and the, the kind of map of where all the things go. So yeah, you know, it's almost like chess. You know, simple to learn takes an eternity to master type of thing. So yeah, that, that's a really good example. Um, the other one you mentioned the website, so let, let's hit that one because that's a really big one I think for new players. Um, and the one that I always uh, go to very quickly is StarCitizen.com. It doesn't exist. It's it's literally right. being brought by someone else. You can go to Squadron42.com and it redirects you to Robert Space Industries, but I don't understand the title game. They don't own the domain. Um, and as I said, yeah. um, this gentleman took him a day and a half to find the website and buy the game. How many people would give up by that point? I mean, that's that's a real big miss on their part. And not even just that, like finding the website itself, finding in official information for this game is difficult. But once you get to the website, you're really not going to have that much easier of an experience getting to the point where you're downloading the game. The guy said he, he also took him a long time just to download it, right? Yeah, he did. So, um, he, he, yeah, so you... Don't, you so what happened was he down, he had uh, an older video card. He downloaded the game and tried to play it, and he had like five frames per second. I think he was on Microtech. And so basically he went out and brought a new graphics card. <laughs> um, that took him another week to get that, and then he got that in. And um, So this gentleman's been through an ordeal. Like feels like it's taken him like a month to get into the game with everything he's told me. So it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's the website is um, it has plenty of different issues from the design being inconsistent in different places to the front page, not just giving you a direct like most people want to get their game through Steam. Yeah, yeah, that's I see that question a lot. Is this game available on Steam? How do I download this? Is there yep. a launcher I need for this? They don't want to go and download a, a, another launcher. So mm -hmm. you need to make that process of making someone do that as easy and simple as possible if you want people to play. But maybe that's the big 4D chess game. Maybe they just want people to buy it but not play play it yet. <laughs> so so this is the this is the reason why a lot of companies don't do stuff on Steam is and, and they don't ever really talk about this very often is it's it's the retail cut. So basically Valve take 30% just for you having their game on their launcher. Yeah. I mean, I think they used to not talk about that, but that's mm. kind of it's too There's high. A lawsuit about it. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it's, it's too, too high. high. Yeah, and um, considering all they are really doing is giving the launch up because you have to pay them extra for advertising. Thirty-three percent is ridiculously high. Um, and back in the day when uh, Valve first started doing the store, they said, "Oh, this will make games cheaper." It's never made games cheaper. Um, it, it is. It has stayed the same. And in, if, if in fact anything, they've got more expensive. So. Um, do I think Valve should lead the way and probably cut prices a little bit? Yeah, I do think they do. I, I know Epic's doing it with a lot of their stuff. Um, I, I just don't understand why they deserve 33% because they're not doing 33% of the work. So they don't deserve 33% of the cut. It's it's just that simple. Um, mm. but, and yeah. that's our Valve mini segment <laughs> sponsored by... Epic. <laughs> well, 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 well you, 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 you run that across any game. I don't know if you know many independent developers, but they don't make a lot of money to begin with. And the fact that they're giving a third of it to Valve, Valve have more money than they know what to do with. Like the whole reason Half-Life 3 doesn't exist is because they are too scared it would affect sa the sales on Steam. That is the whole reason we I don't mean, have this it. Is, this is the whole idea of having mm -hmm. a platform versus having an yeah. actual like just a product and that's why everybody's trying to create their own platforms now but regardless star citizen has its own platform and it is doing a very bad job of i think selling it to newcomers and making it easy for players to get mm. invested in that platform i mean you have to do everything through the website tutorials yep. guides communication organization buying ships um trading in ships all kinds of stuff happens, even even announcements for game events. All of it happens on the website, yet the website is not great enough to to, to let you know that. It, it's it's really interesting, for, like when you think about it, because like a lot of the time you go, oh yeah, they'll do it before or just before the game comes out. But why wouldn't you do it now? Because doesn't that it doesn't have any gameplay associated with it? It's a website. What is there to hurt with refining that experience and making it so much easier for new players to get in? I, I've never quite understood that that method. And quite honestly, if you actually log out of your account and kind of reset the website, what comes up at the start is this Squadron Forty Two um, Star Citizen the little thing. split screen thing. And, yeah. and, and I'm sorry, but it's nobody confusing. nobody knows what Squadron Forty Two or Star Citizen is or or that. It, that they kind of want to just need a thing that says play the game. And if you actually go to the website, yeah. um, the stuff up the stuff, the top is just not highlighted properly. And um, there's lots and lots of text and it talks about what you can do in the game before it even offers you a, um, a package or how to get into the game. I just, yeah. I, I think it needs to be looked at not by a marketing person, but by like, like an educational person that can go, well, this is how you educate someone on how to play something complex. Cause they look like they're I mean, going they at to, it from a brochure rather than a, a player. They just need to get focus groups of new players to use. I don't understand that yeah. they must have had focus groups of people who try this and say, Hey, this is a little too complex. Mm. I just want like when it pops up, pop up a blurb that tells you what Star Citizen is, what the minimum requirements are, what the status of it is, what's the latest mm. update, here's how to download it. Yeah. And then like if they want, they can just click anywhere on the screen to make that go away. But I, I just don't, I don't see why it should be, we shouldn't have to include a tutorial section on how to get the game. Yeah, I, I think, it, like I, I always wonder if it just comes down to money, but well, the way I look at it is, if you put money into it, don't you make more money because more people can use it? So I'm. It, it's no, probably... that's what I said. They didn't. They don't need to. The people yeah. they get a pledge and then they can't figure out how to play the game. <laughs> so they still get the money. 
<laughs> That's kind of evil of you. I'll have to remember that one. Uh, add, <laughs> add it to the add it to the list. But, uh, yeah. But I, I think the like to, to kind of bring this all the kind of a close. Um, I think the real big thing is is the reason we want more people in the game and an, an easier game to get people into is game health. The more people that are in and playing, the more not just more successful but more stable this game will be um, with better game health. Um, you know, the the more people around to play it, the more the longevity of it will increase and in everything. So yeah. Also, the better reputation it has. This game, true, is. It lives and dies on the internet by its reputation. That's not even true. It lives and dies on its on its gameplay. But mm -hmm. when it when you get outside of the community, it's all about the reputation the game has. And a lot of times you hear that not be so much based on the game, but rather the rumors around the game. The more people who can actually get in and play it and see for a fact that it's doing stuff, progressing, it's actually pretty fun in some cases, mm -hmm. and it's got a unique experience, the better for literally the entire game community. I do think the game... I, does well on its own. I think a lot of the media perpetuated how bad it was in early on because the we all know if you read the data and statistics, um, bad news travels faster and gets more clicks. So if they can crap on it now, that's fine because CIG is still going to need them when the game comes out to advertise it. And it's different if you crap on a company like EA because you crap on their game, they won't let you review the next one. Uh, and so um, it's really interesting when you also look at it, when they have crapped on it, no matter who they are who's, who's done it, it actually, there's a spike because what people will do is they go, oh, I'm going to go check out this garbage game. And they actually go look at it to themselves. And then I think they find that it's not a scam. Um, even if, let's just say even 10% of those people stay around. Um, th there's a spike. Yeah, they, there's they, an uptake. They stay around on the website. <laughs> But there are there are some people that manage to make it in. You know, they they I, I don't know how they do it. Like they either run into friends or they. Um, you can I, figure it out. I'm just wondering if you're if you're adamant, you can figure it out. Yeah. So the wonder for me is 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 it what is the roadblock? Like like are we only seeing a flow of ten percent of people coming in, twenty percent coming in? How complicated is it? And you know, with like this gentleman that I met, and I've met a few like that, right? That have just it's taken them a while to get in. Um, I seem to think only the most super computer savvy users are the ones that are getting through. So there's a there's a divide think, with the casual market. I think obviously there's always exceptions, but I do think that there is a not uh, a not in. Oh gosh, I can't even remember the term. Um, there's a not insignificant amount of people who probably never get past the launcher. Yeah. for whatever reason whether it's because of the way that you install it or the way that you um the way that the website works or even that some you know random bug pops up and they just don't feel like looking online for what's that error code why did mm -hmm. sixteen thousand pop up on my screen whatever i'll try this next quarter like yeah. there are a lot of little things that you can eliminate that keep on shaving people off the top but that probably isn't super important to them right now you hit on another point there too which is burnout so we won't get into that but that's another real thing like people come in they play it for two weeks they get burnt out they disappear for x amount of time and then come back and mm -hmm. get burnt out again and off they go again and i think for a lot yeah. of people that is the normal state of this game as it's been for the last couple of years but <laughs> hopefully that uh changes soon yeah all right, uh, what would you like to know from people in the comments uh, space? What, what would you like to hear uh, people's uh, thoughts and opinions on? Um, I probably want to know what the most difficult part of the first, like, four, four hours of mm. experiencing Star Citizen is. You know, that, that includes signing up, downloading it, getting into the game, um, but also, you know, getting out of your room, finding your ship, getting the first items, figuring out what the heck, how do you respawn? I, I kind of just want to know what really catches people. Yeah. Um, I guess I want to know is, is this too soon? Or or do you think like this, this is a sign that we are kind of rounding that corner? Um, and they're, they're obviously starting to take it seriously. And I think the other one I'd add to that is the website. I, I don't, I just can't understand why they've left it so long. Um, it, it's been a really weird website for a really, really, really long time. Um, and they seem to f focus a lot more on flashy graphics than valuable information and then when they do have information it's the complete opposite and it's like walls of text um so it's like a turn on and turn off all at the same time it's really bizarre yeah so yeah 
But as you said, I think focus groups might be the way for that. But yeah, let us know in the comments below, like what, what things you would recommend that CIG try and um, stuff like that. And Space and I will have a look through those. Thank you for joining us, Space. I hope you enjoy your holiday. Um, yeah. With that, I'll look forward to when you get back. All right. He's been Space Tomato. I've been Execute. I'm going to catch you in the next one.